we're going to use linear substitution to solve the first order differential equation. Suppose dy dx is equal to g of ax plus by. The substitution that can help us to rewrite this differential equation is taking ax plus by to be z or any other variable that you like. Suppose we have dy dx, which is negative 2x plus y to the second power minus 7. We're going to define a new variable u, which is negative 2x plus y. When you do the substitution, you need to take the differential of u as well. Let's take the differential of u with respect to x. It becomes negative 2 plus dy over dx. So dy over dx can be written as 2 plus du over dx. Now, wherever we see dy over dx, we're going to use 2 plus du dx. And wherever we see 2x plus y, we're going to use u. So du over dx plus 2 is equal to u squared minus 7. But how do we solve this differential equation? In order to solve this differential equation, you can simplify this further by bringing 2 to the other side. So you get du over dx as u squared minus 9. This is a separable differential equation that we know how to deal with. So, so far we saw that we have this differential equation. We use u sub and du divided by dx becomes u squared minus 9. So, du divided by u squared minus 9 is equal to dx. Well, to solve this differential equation, first we're going to apply the method of partial fractions that you learned in pre-calculus u squared minus 9 can be written as u minus 3 times u plus 3. So 1 divided by u squared minus 9 is nothing but 1 divided by u minus 3 times u plus 3. Well, 1 over u minus 3 times u plus 3 can be written as the summation of two fractions, a divided by u minus 3 plus b divided by u plus 3. Let us take the common denominator. So 1 is equal to a times u plus 3 plus b times u minus 3. Well, if you take u to be 3, then you can get rid of this quantity on this side. a times 6 is 1, so a is 1 over 6. If you take u to be negative 3, then you can get rid of this quantity here, so b times negative 6 is 1, or b is equal to minus 1 over 6. So we found these two coefficients a and b. Now, if we go back to our differential equation and use the partial fractions to simplify du over u squared minus 9, these in terms can be written as 1 over u squared minus 9, which is equal to 1 over 6, times u minus 3 minus 1 over 6 times u plus 3. So if you take the integral of both sides, the integral of du divided by u squared minus 9 is nothing but the integral of 1 over the first quantity, which is 6 times u minus 3, minus the integral of the second quantity, which is 1 over 6 times u plus 3 du. Very good. We know how to deal with these types of integrals. They're easy to work with. The integral of 1 divided by 6 times u minus 3 is ln of absolute value of u minus 3. And you have 1 over 6 that you need to write it in front of it. And then the integral of 1 over 6 times u plus 3 du is another ln. You have 1 over 6 times ln of absolute value of u plus 3. For each one of them, we're going to add the constant of integrations. 
So please pay attention. We just took the integral of the left-hand side and we need to set it equal to the integral on the right-hand side. Very good. So, so far, we saw that the integral of du divided by u squared minus 9 must be equal to the integral of dx. And on the left-hand side, we ended up with the integral of du divided by u squared minus 9, which is 1 over 6 ln of absolute value of u minus 3 minus 1 over 6 ln of absolute value of u plus 3. And on the right-hand side, you have x plus c. So 1 over 6 times ln of absolute value of u minus 3 minus ln of u, absolute value of u plus 3. 1 over 6 is a common factor. So you can easily factor this out and write it in front of the difference between two lns that eventually can be written as the combination of them. On the right-hand side, you have x plus constant of integration. Now, 1 over 6 times ln of absolute value of u minus 3 divided by u plus 3 is equal to x plus c sub 1. What you can do here, you can multiply everything by 6 and simplify it as much as you can. So we are summarizing the left-hand side, what we did so far. We have 1 over 6 ln of absolute value of u minus 3 divided by u plus 3, which is equal to x plus c sub 1. And in terms, ln of absolute value of u minus 3 divided by u plus 3 is 6 times x plus 6 times c1. We can call this guy c2. u minus 3 divided by u plus 3 is equal to e to the power 6x plus 6c1, which in terms can be written by e to the power 6 times x times c. This plus minus e to the power 6 times c1 can be replaced by a new constant like c to make it more readable for us. Now, we're going to isolate u on one side. We're going to apply algebra here. So let's see, to apply algebra, in general, if you have u minus 3 divided by u plus 3 equals to a quantity like m, what you can do, you can multiply both sides by u plus 3. You end up with u minus 3 equals to m times u plus 3. So u minus 3 is equal to, if you distribute m into parentheses, you get mu plus 3m u minus m times u is equal to 3m plus 3. What we did, we brought 3 to the other side and we brought mu to the left-hand side so we can factor out u. u times 1 minus m is 3m plus 3 and u is 3m plus 3 over 1 minus m. So m can be any quantity. The quantity on this side is c e to power 6 times x, which is your quantity m. Just do the replacement here. U can be written as 3 times 1 plus c e to power 6x divided by 1 minus c e to power 6 times x. So we isolated u on one side. But what was the definition of u? u was negative 2x plus y. So your y becomes 2x plus 3 times 1 plus c e to the power 6x divided by 1 minus c e to the power 6 times x. So we solve the differential equation by doing substitution, a little bit of algebra, partial fractions, and this is the solution that you have at the end.